Well, the White House has Blake innovated here on uh, defense over this budget deal, but not on defense itself. Uh, because they were able to guarantee $12.5 billion more for defense spending. Uh, so that, they seem to think, is a uh, victory reaction now from GOP fundraiser Noel Nick Moore, Conservative Review Chief Political Correspondent Deneen Borelli. Deneen, what do you make of this um, skittishness on the part of Republicans who once again don't like the way Democrats are playing this as a win for them? Uh, and, and, and coming as it did up after some other PR bruising battles here that they feel that they are getting the short end of the media coverage stick. Yeah, well, I think Republicans need to pick the right battles, and this was certainly the right battle to pick. Let's start with uh, uh, Paul Ryan, for example. What do we offer to with this guy? First, it was Obamacare. They, they couldn't do anything with that. Now, with the spending bill, they couldn't do anything. Uh, Paul Ryan set the table for this to be a priority, Neil, to not shut down the government, which, by the way, is non-essential government activity. I also think President Trump should have insisted on language in the spending bill to uh, really penalize sanctuary cities. This would have put Democrats on notice. This would have blamed Democrats for the government shutdown and also would have put the spotlight on Democrats who are covering for illegal criminal migrants instead of covering for safety and security for innocent Americans. They should have cranked up the PR machine just on that issue alone. Well, right now, I think to that point, Deneen, I'll raise this with Noel a little bit. The Democrats are seizing on what they get versus what Republicans do not get. Um, they, they got no cuts in, 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 in curbs to sanctuary cities, uh, no cutbacks in the environmental funding or anything at the EPA. Planned Parenthood and its budget continues to receive federal funding, nothing cut there. Um, so they go back and say, even when it comes to Puerto Rico and Medicaid funds available to Puerto Rico, uh, they try them there. And so that they know how to run the government, even in the minority role, than Republicans in the majority role. What do you make of that? You know, Neil, this was a bipartisan victory. And in a bipartisan victory, you have small victories and small defeats on both sides. And that's what I don't understand. I, I knew that the Democrats, if the Democrats got a little bit, they would spin this as Trump's weakness or the fact that the GOP and yet the is media, going to your, You know, that's a very good point. The media is saying you've got to be bipartisan. You've got to reach out to the other side. So lo and behold, he does. They do. And now it's being seen as a sign of weakness. They can't win. And no, no, they can't win at all. And, you know, I knew bipartisanship is, is what we all want. As Americans, we elect leaders to where we can have a bipartisan movement. You know, each side, give and take. And so what you have is a give and take on each side. You know, the Republicans won with school choice, with, um, you know, drug prevention, with the, uh, you know, no new money for Obamacare and so forth. But still, it has looked as, you know, the mainstream media spins it as the Republicans. The Republican Party is in shambles, and the GOP, how are they going to do this going forward? But, it, but actually, it is great. It is great because we have a bipartisan victory. And for once, both sides won it's something, and we avoided a government shutdown. And if the government would have shut down, instead of blaming it on Democrats, all, every time that the government shuts down, they blame it on Republicans. Well, you know, there is something to do that. And, Zadine, I do remember that. Um, the last uh, shutdown, for example, was blamed on Republican intransigence wanting to rein in spending. Never Democratic intransigence wanting to continue spending. I guess that's just the way it is. But uh, Republicans felt that they were burnt then, although there's very little polling evidence to suggest it hurt them at the polls. That's correct. And also, Neil, look at the fact that what Republicans really need to do, I think, is to continue to ride that wave of momentum from the presidential election. This is a business show. The trend is your friend. Ride that momentum from the election to the fact that 96 percent of Americans voted for Trump and still support, would vote for him today and still support President Trump, excuse me. So I think they are missing a huge opportunity to fight. Americans did not put a Republicans in the House, Senate, and the White House just to cave, just to roll over. They didn't do that. Um, you know, real quickly on the, uh, the health care thing and then the tax cut thing, I mean, there is an argument to be made among lawyers. I don't know if either of you are lawyers, but I mean, that, that uh, because this would go outside the 10-year window, well, that is, uh, particularly on the tax cut stuff, then it's, not, it's going to be beyond just a simple majority to get what you want, Republicans. You're, you're going to have to go for much bigger numbers, 60-plus votes in the Senate. Uh, 
Would that be a problem right now for Republicans if it comes down to that? Well, you know, and Trump said this in a tweet, and I think he meant it. And I think, you know, when you get a Trump, when you get a tweet from Trump, it's his immediate reaction, his immediate thought. That's why I like him on Twitter so much, and a lot of people hate it. But he's got a point. 2018, let's get, you know, we need, we need to get more Republicans elected in the Senate. Let's get 60, you know. And so I really think going forward, if you look at it the way that you that you put it out there, I think that it's an imperative that we get we get our act together and we get more Republicans. If if that's what you want, if that if what you want is to overwhelmingly pass everything the way that we have it, right. and then you're going to have to do that. All right, ladies, thank you both very, very much. Thank